Hey everyone, today we have a ton of new details about Monster Hunter Rise for Nintendo Switch. But before I get into all of these details, I gotta remind you we got a couple giveaways going on. One's for a Nintendo Switch, a PlayStation 5, or an Xbox Series X. Another is for two copies of Pikmin 3 Deluxe. To enter, head down to the description uh, and figure that all out. Uh, good luck to you guys. Also, we are on the road to 100,000 subscribers. If we can get 100,000 subscribers in 2020. We will have a massive 100 plus winner, $1,000 plus giveaway happening this January. All right, let's get into this. So uh, new Monster Hunter Rise details are coming out of the woodworks because they have done a ton of interviews at various outlets. Now, a lot of the information is repeated between interviews. So we're going to kind of go through uh, just minimalist breakdowns here of a lot of this stuff. Uh, first one that I'm going to talk about is one that happened at IGN, and I'll have all these interviews linked down in the description. Uh, here's like a little breakdown here. So, uh, Tujimoto said the team decided it would be better for the players to understand what the game is about by going with Monster Hunter Rise as the name. Uh, Tushimoto also said that they wanted to have a title that reflects what it's about rather than just a number, and they said new way of naming the games is also planned for the future. So some people are wondering, is this Monster Hunter 6? Is this another variation of 5? Reality is they're not going to really be using numbers anymore. Uh, so like Monster Hunter World, Monster Hunter Rise, kind of get used to these naming conventions. They're going to keep using them, so we might be done with numbered entries, uh, and that might be honestly for the best. Uh, single player progression won't affect your ability to play multiplayer quests and vice versa. Cutscenes will no longer prevent you from joining multiplayer quests with friends like in Monster Hunter World. Uh, you could skip cutscenes in single player and multiplayer. You can rewatch these cutscenes later. The devs laughed if they were inspired by Breath of the Wild, like laughing, uh, yeah, right? Uh, I don't think so. They've actually been wanting to make a Monster Hunter with more freedom of movement since Monster Hunter Generation. So they had this idea before Breath of the Wild even came out. Uh, Capcom wants players to use the wire bug in between attacks to make new combos. The wire bug attacks are not customizable. Other new elements regarding actions the team can't talk about yet. Uh, there are no armor skills that affect the wire bug. The antidote icon has changed. Changes like this were being made to suit the Switch's small screen. Uh, there's no built-in voice chat. It's not compatible with Nintendo Switch Online mobile app voice chat. Uh, can You could type messages and use pre-built messages, stickers, and gestures to communicate. Prowler mode from Monster Hunter Generations is not in Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, remember, Monster Hunter Rise does launch on March 26, 2021. So that's what we got from IGM. But we got even more information. Uh, as an example, Monster Hunter Rise is a big deal on Switch. And it is a AAA game. It's actually been in development for four years. So this comes from an interview that uh, that uh, Tushimoto, uh, who is the producer of the game, uh, did with Eurogamer. And he said, it's been about four years in total. Ichinese was the director of Monster Hunter Generations, which came out about four or five years ago. We did give him a bit of time off after that. It wasn't like the next day we started development, but he asked him if he could work on the next portable. At the time, it hadn't been released, a Switch title. And we also had to consider what engine to use at the same time before we get started. We're using the RE engine, which at the time had not yet been released because the first title using it was Resident Evil 7. So yeah, long story short, it was a total of about four years once we got all those ducks in a row. Um, he then he then went on uh, to say that, uh, to be honest, we didn't really consider bringing Monster Hunter World to Switch because we do not treat each title as its own concept. And you can ignore the hardware you're releasing on it when you design the game. If you've got something like Nintendo Switch, which is pick up and play, you can play it anywhere. You don't necessarily want the same gameplay experience, which is designed assuming you're sitting in front of a big TV on a sofa for four hours straight. We want to be able to design a game that you can pick up for 30 minutes on the go before bed and get something out of that experience. And that really affects the gameplay design, and you could just bring that over and have it be the same. So we never really considered that when it came to Monster Hunter World. So they're, they're kind of saying they didn't consider bringing Monster Hunter World over. I think that's a disappointing decision. I think that also is treating Switch as a one-way street, not, not giving Switch its full credit. Because remember, Switch isn't just a portable. It is a hybrid. You can play it on your TV. There are people that play Switch exclusively on TV. So it's very disappointing to see that the reason we don't have Monster Hunter World is they don't think it fits with the system that's on the go, ignoring that it's not just a system on the go. This is Capcom's fault for only viewing the Switch as a handheld. It is what it is. We can't really do anything about it. Capcom did further talk about the RE engine at the Eurogamer interview as well. Um, about you know why they're using the RE engine and how hard it was 
to use that RE engine on Switch. He said, it was definitely a new challenge for us. As you mentioned, it was indeed our first time bringing the RE engine onto the Switch. So a lot of background technical engineers work needed to be done just to achieve targeting new hardware platforms. Of course, this being an internal Capcom engine, that meant we did have access and the benefit of the expertise and knowledge of our engineers to hand. Uh, they worked very hard getting the engine working for us and ensuring that we would take the game content, which involves these not strictly open world per se, but extremely large maps with no loading areas between them, having those work seamlessly whilst always maintaining the graphic quality we wanted to have, Oriented is known for beautiful lighting and shadows and we wanted to keep that stuff in without affecting performance and having the frame rate be something that could achieve our targets a lot of this stuff was difficult balance to achieve but i think that the team has really pulled it targeting targeting a comfortable 30 frames per second whilst also making the game look as good as it does and pushing you know the power of the switch as much as we can it's been a challenging but rewarding experience and i think the big takeaway from this is the switch here is being pushed to the maximum Monster Hunter Rise is pushing every ounce of performance it can get out of Switch with their engine and with this game. So what are the big takeaways here? Well, Monster Hunter Rise is an incredible undertaking, uh, purpose-built for Switch, so don't expect to see this game go to other platforms. Uh, it's a game that they think is obviously going to sell extremely well. They put a AAA budget and a AAA mindset behind developing it. And it basically is Monster Hunter 6, but they're not going to be using numbers anymore. Uh, they're done with the number naming. Uh, Monster, that, that really probably started with Monster Hunter World. When they named that world, they probably realized, hey, look, we're going to start uh, doing proper names behind each game instead of doing numbers. Kind of like Legend of Zelda. They could have did Zelda 1, Zelda 2, Zelda 3, Zelda 4. They eventually you know, stopped doing that because they, they called Zelda 2, Zelda 2. And then you know, they start, stopped using the, the number moniker and just started using names. And I think that's a, a good way to do it. I know that can confuse some people. Oh, what games comes after what? Is there a timeline that connects all this together? I understand that that's a thing that some gamers worry about personally. I don't think that's a big deal with Monster Hunter games, but it's exciting to see all this happening. I wouldn't go to assume just because RE Engine is now on Switch, that means we're going to get RE Engine games, you know, like the Resident Evil series, or uh, I think the next Street Fighter is probably going to be on RE Engine. I, I would not presume that we're going to start getting these games on Switch magically just because the engine is now on Switch. Uh, but this also fuels the speculation behind, you know, that they wanted to target that smooth 30 FPS. Well, there was a part of the footage that definitely didn't look like it was smooth 30 FPS to me. Uh, and that makes me wonder if, you know, does this further the proof that, hey, look, there's that Switch Pro coming and Capcom knows it. And that's where you get that smooth 30 FPS. I don't know. Um, it's definitely something to consider. Capcom's obviously not going to talk about it. We do know that, you know, Capcom is why there's four gigs of RAM on the Switch to begin with. Um, it'd be interesting if while making this game, they're like, hey, you're working on that next hardware platform. We'd really like eight gigs of RAM there at least. Uh, these are the kind of clock speeds we would like, this or that. Uh, because the game does look really good um, on the, the platform. See, the weird thing I, th I find is it's using the RE engine. And in using that RE engine, it's pushing the Switch to the max. But when I go back and watch that footage, as it's struggling to hit certain FPS targets, it doesn't look like it's scaling down the resolution. Now, I figured to hit these FPS targets, it would have a resolution scaler like pretty much all third-party games do. Even some Nintendo games do it as well, where they switch between resolutions to maintain a stable frame rate. But even when the game was dipping in frame rate, it didn't look to me like the resolution was dipping to compensate. This makes me wonder if they have a locked resolution in mobile and in handheld. I'm sorry, in handheld and in docked mode. Uh, and because of that, that's why this, the, 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 the frame rate's not as stable, but they're doing that on purpose for the Switch Pro. I don't know, wild speculation to throw out there. Again, Monster Hunter Rise looks incredible. It might be the game pushing Switch hardware to the max. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to see uh, what they're able to do. And obviously now that we're hitting the maximum capabilities of the Nintendo Switch with a purpose-built Switch game, uh, you know, that, that's usually when you start to talk about the next hardware, uh, cause that usually doesn't happen until the end of generations for most platforms. Uh, hence why so a lot of the games at the end of the PlayStation three generation looked absolutely incredible in comparison to the beginning, because that's usually when you start hitting the maximum capabilities of the platform, um, is usually towards the end. So, uh, that if it's happening now, that means, yeah, that switch pro hard stuff is probably true. It's probably right on the horizon. All right, folks, I am Nathaniel Rumble Jets from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Monster Hunter Rise special, and I'll catch you in the next video. Yes.